Hello, I'm Mark Silver. In this video, we're going to process some uh, one-hour file sets from NGS core stations near Chicago, and we're going to constrain one of the core stations and then calculate the coordinates on the other core stations, and um, by doing that, we will be able to have a nice clean verification because we'll have coordinates for all of the core stations, but we're deriving three of them. So I've already downloaded the one hour file sets. Let's start CGO Office. And we'll make a new job. I'm going to call it Chicago. And for the coordinate system, let's choose Illinois East. So we'll click on dot dot dot, custom, datum root, America, United States, NAD 83, and Illinois East. Let's look at that. I'm going to leave it in meters. And so we're ready to go. Let's import some GNSS data. We'll go to the GNSS tab, click on import. And um, I'm going to change the folder to where my Illinois data is. We only want to look at Rhinox observation files. Well, look, I got six of them, not four. We'll import all of the data. And it looks like they all came in one hour long, the correct antenna heights, and they came in with the right antennas. That'll make it easy. We'll click on Confirm. And the station names are meaningful to me. Let's go to the map. Let's load a background map. We'll click on Online Map. Oh, Google should be fine. Confirm. And you can see these are pretty tightly spaced core stations. This looks great. Let's hold one of these points for control. And I have the beta coordinate. So this is the DP2A beta coordinates. And we want an ad 83. Let's copy the latitude. Copy. Okay, we need to find DP2. DP2. Here we go. We'll right click on this. So we're going to go to stations. DP2. Right click. Convert to control point. I'll go to control points. Highlight this. I am going to constrain latitude, longitude, and height. Paste in the latitude we want. The longitude. I don't think it likes a space after W. And the height. Let's see. 75, 75, 96, 507. Confirm that. And we're ready to do an initial process. I'll click on process here. Now the default configuration for CGO2 is to process 60 second intervals. So we've done an initial process. I'm just going to look through. Looks good. Everything looks pretty good here. Here, yeah, everything looks great, but I'm going to change the sample interval to 15 seconds and reprocess, just because. Oh, these are core stations too, so they should have pretty clear views to the horizon. So make those two changes, and I'm going to reprocess these results. So I'll push process here. This will take some time, so I'll speed this up for the video. Okay, processing's done. Let's do an adjustment. 
click on adjust auto spine I'm probably not smart enough to make any changes we'll click on the 3d constrained adjustment open report okay we've got the adjusted geodetic coordinates and here's the ECEF and here are our grid coordinates I'm going to copy these and I'm going to make a new spreadsheet and paste these values in and this will be the CGO2 results. Now I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to go convert all of the core station coordinates to um, metric Illinois East put them into the spreadsheet, calculate the differences, and I'll be back in a few minutes. And we're back. So I've calculated the state plane coordinates for all of the core stations based on the data sheets from the NGS. Again, I'm using the uh, 14 beta coordinates. And uh, then I've calculated the difference Remember that we've only constrained one station, DB2A, and also remember these are one-hour files. These are not two-hour files. So I've colored all of the DP2A lines here in yellow to signify that they've been constrained and then the rest have been computed. And you can see that the horizontal positions, well, you know, here's one that's half a centimeter, half a centimeter, and then we only have one elevation that's um, out by more than a centimeter. And I thought, you know, you think, well, why would that be? And here's the long-term plot for um, TP6B. And the data set that we're using is from 2018. So here's the long-term plot. You can see that it's kind of trending a little bit low. And if we look at the short-term plot for that station, B, short-term, yeah, you can see it's a couple, couple centimeters lower than expected. So probably, you know, that could be okay. I don't know. But looking at the air estimates in CGO, uh, you know, a couple of millimeters for the heights, Easting a couple millimeters and northing a couple millimeters. So a one hour data set process, and again, these are short vectors or relatively short vectors around Chicago. So there's another CGO2 job for you showing that it does, in fact, get the right numbers for short vectors. In the next video, we'll do a really long vector and see how it does on those. Thanks very much for watching this.